Praise God. Praise God. Uh, you all look wonderful and beautiful from here. Tell your neighbor you look good. Uh, my name is Edward Mulwa. You can call me Brother Edward. I will not feel offended. You can call me Pastor Edward. It's okay. I will not take offense. Indio. I'm born again. Above everything else, I'm born again, and I thank God for this wonderful day. I want to, first of all, uh, thank the bishop and mom. You know, when you have parents who believe in you, uh, there is nothing you cannot do. And I also want to thank all the pastors that serve diligently uh, in this place. May the Lord bless you. And lastly, I cannot forget to thank you. Thank you. Tell your neighbor, thank you. Say, yeah, thank you for coming uh, to the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, greetings from my wife, Nasia Wongo. Nimewambia ni tume. Ni tume, na akasema ni wambia hivi, mebarikiwa. Mepokea? Yeah. Uh, she has to prepare for the ministry team prayers uh, that start at 8.40. Uh, today we are looking at the redigging of the wells of salvation. Uh, and I thank God that when we look at the redigging at the wells of salvation, one of the things that I've come to learn in my Christian work is that outside the presence of God, never overestimate yourself. Never overestimate yourself outside the presence of God. Uh, remember David. David was able to forgive Saul, someone who wanted to take away his life. But David never knew that one day he will take someone's wife and sleep with them. Look at Peter. He's, he told God when he was standing with Jesus that Mimi, Mimi Peter, I will never deny you. I will never deny you. But what happened? Did he deny Jesus? Yeah, because outside the presence of God, you know, when you are here in church, you are in the presence of God. It is easy to say, God, I love you. God, I surrender my all. But outside the presence of God, never overestimate yourself. And that is the lesson that I've learned. Outside the presence of God, you will do things until people will say, eh, uyo ni mulu, uyo tunajua. Because outside the presence of God, you can never uh, overestimate yourself. So this day, uh, we are looking at as we look at the digging of the wells of salvation, and I remember I shared this message a couple of weeks back, and we were talking about the new believer's zeal uh, that often accompanies the faith and tends to rub on everyone around them. And I was asking uh, that midweek service, do you remember the time you were born again? The way you were so fired up for God. The, day, the way you were so... You wanted to go out, come on in missions, come on in evangelism, you wanted to go out and preach Jesus. Nothing could stop you even from getting to church. Those are the days that when even there was rain, you came out and you told God, God, hold this rain till I reach church. And God held the rains for you, you reached church. But what happens along the way? Squeezing uh, Kinyesha, I think it on online. That initial excitement, that initial fire, it is not there. That initial sense of joy and purpose that usually follows someone's salvation, at times it tends to win away. Think back at your own salvation. I remember how it was like when you got born again. Just think. Maybe those of you in high school. And I remember I gave a testimony here when uh, we were in high school. It had come a time what will come that I'll see you, son. See you. And uh, because there was a lot of dancing there, there was a lot of freedom there, we were not telling them to do this or that. And I remember that afternoon, uh, there was a grasshopper. And we prayed with a brother and we told God, so that you know there is God, today now today, the grasshopper, it atoka hapo, ikuje hapa. And that is what exactly, when we prayed, it, uh, that grasshopper moved to the exact point that we had said, that day is you. It was full. And I remember now I was fired up. I was a prefect. 
I was walking in the dormitory and, and, and I saw one boy, he was sleeping, and I asked him, what is the problem? I can be a kitchen in a woman. I can be a rise up. Wewe to naomba, sai, and you must get your healing. And I prayed. Immediately took his books, went to, went to class. And, but what happens? That this fire dies along the way. That is what I want us to, to look at today. And uh, you know, when you are born again, it's almost like a shot of uh, spiritual adrenaline. That new believer zeal, it's infectious. You want everyone to know that you are born again. You want everyone to know that there is a God who is able to save. You are so excited about the Lord and what uh, he, ca he can do. And you are excited to tell others about Christ and what he has done for you. Think about the woman at the well. The Samaritan woman, after Jesus gives her his living water. You know, people knew this woman, come wrong numbers, but what happened? She goes back to her hometown, Samaria, and tells everyone about Jesus, what Jesus had, has done, and many believe because of her testimony. So today, you not been fired up. Do you know how many people you would have brought to the Lord, but because of many Mazia, you want to be cool, calm, and composed. Wewe utaki maneno mingi. Do you know how many people have missed salvation just because uh, you are not zealous for God? Salvation leads to immediate joy, worship, and witness. But what do we do when that new believer's zeal begins to wear off? And it does wear off. When the course of following Jesus begins to mount in our life, when you are praying and praying and nothing happens, when trials come, when the cares and the, and the concerns of this world they begin to take a better part of us. When in our flesh, the newness of everything starts to feel like not new anymore. It starts to wear off. Unfortunately, you know what? This is not so uncommon with us believers. Otherwise, we will not be having that phrase of new believers zeal. It will only be Christian zeal. In Revelation 2.4, the Bible, uh, Jesus admonishes the church in Ephesus or even here in Zimmerman, because they had abandoned their love for Jesus that they had at first. In Psalms 51.12, David's joy was waning. It was becoming weaker and smaller because he asked God to renew in him the joy of salvation. In Romans 12.1, commands us not to be lacking in zeal, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. And the message translation says, don't burn out, keep yourself fueled and aflame. And how do you keep ourselves fueled and aflame? We are going to see that in a few while. Uh, and what happens when the love of Christ begins to fade in our lives and the joy starts to wane and the zeal decreases? And when that happens, what do we do? And as we shall look briefly in uh, Isaiah 12, we must learn to draw water from the life-changing wells of salvation. We must learn to regularly preach the gospel to ourselves and regularly remind ourselves that God, what God has saved us from. Remind us of his greatness and what he has gloriously done for us in Jesus. As we set our minds on the wells of salvation, we begin to be grateful. And I thank God because this morning as Pastor Mwashi was talking about uh, just giving thanks, I knew that was a confirmation of what I was to minister this morning. So we need to learn to draw water from the wells of salvation each and every day. No matter how long we've been in salvation, imagine each and every day. You cannot say, Nani hapa shi akikujua maji once, ukisikia kiu, unakunyonga maji once, alafu unasema nivo, ni mbaka December. You say it kwa February. No. But you, ukisikia kiu, utakunyo maji tena. Sindio? And that is how our salvation is. We need to draw water every day, each and every day, that we may continue to bear fruit and continue to be on fire and live zealously for the Lord. So let's look at Isaiah 12. Mtansaidia kusoma. It's only six verses. Sawa, sawa. Uh, so let's go. And in that day, you will say, O oh Lord, I will praise you, though you are angry with me, your anger is turned away and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, the Lord is my strength and song. 
He has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day, you will say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his deeds among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, O inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in, his, in your midst. Thank you so much. The passage speaks about life in the kingdom of God after experiencing God's salvation. That is Christ's saving work. After experiencing salvation, what next do we move on to? And the chapter is divided into two songs. We have the first song from verse 1 and 2, which is written to individuals. And then we have uh, the second song, which is from verse 4 to 6, uh, which is you in plural, which uh, the second song is geared towards the community of believers as we've gathered today in faith. And in the middle of that song in verse 3, it says, there is a very wonderful statement, that with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. There lays the answer of, to our question, what now? What's next? What's, what's, what is it that uh, after I have experienced salvation? In other words, it's not a next thing that we move on to. You don't move from the wells of salvation to some other wells, but you continue to draw water from the wells day by day. You continue to read the word. You continue to, uh, to pray every day. Set a time to pray every day. And I love what Bishop usually encourages us in our G12, that where I am, there is a well. Keep on digging. And he has been repeating this over and over. And I gave also an example that if you are lost in the desert, and you've walked for miles. Then you come to this place where now there's an oasis. The water is pure. You don't take a drink and then do what? And then move. But you pinch tent there. You drink till your salvation comes. Till people find you. You don't move from there. Because you don't know from there. So spiritually speaking, once we drink from the wells of salvation, we no longer move from, uh, because they are inexhaustible. You cannot finish. They never run dry. And this shows us one thing, that even in God, there are virgin dimensions that we need to discover. There are dimensions in God that we can really uh, think about and say, and, and, and when we think about them, they are able to help us to have a closer walk with God. Because even as we travel, as we redig, and I brought to us this, that when we talk of redigging the wells of prayer, when we talk of redigging the wells of our fathers, it is a vertical journey of intimacy. We are going into intimacy with God. We travel towards God, a continuous and a progressive journey. And by the way, do you know this is, uh, this is Valentine's Week, Sinukweli? And as, as Pastor Mwashi was singing here, he was saying, darling Jesus. And I thought, if there's any wonderful love that God has given us, it's in John 3.16. That for God so loved the world, that he gave his only, not one of his, but only begotten son. Imagine for you and me. So Jesus is our salvation. We have an infinite amount of living water available to us. So we can return to him every single day and his wells never run dry. We can pitch tent. We can tarry in God's presence till we carry. We can stay there till God speaks to us and till God transforms our lives. And we can be satisfied by, satisfied by his mercy and grace. And in John 4.14, Jesus says to the Samaritan woman, whoever drinks of the water, I will give him, will never thirst again. The water I give him will become a spring of welling up, uh, of water welling up to eternal life. So brethren, for us to continue journeying in the journey of eternal life, then we need to drink from the wells of salvation. 
So we are looking at personal worship of the individual. And this is in verse 1 and to verse 2. So there are four characteristics of the personal worship of the individual. That is thankfulness, fearless trust, divine strength, and joyful praise. And I want us to look at thankfulness, which we even started with as we were worshiping God this morning. You will say, verse 1 says, you will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O God. The individual that draws water from the wells of salvation is a thankful individual. He gives thanks to the Lord. Giving thanks should make sense as a first response. And I remember someone asked me one day that if you had a debt, debt in a pile up, a good debt, after he looked at 100,000, I scratched his surface, and he debt. Then someone offers to come and pay that debt for you. What will be the first thing you'll say in your heart? You will be so grateful, isn't it? And this is what Jesus did for us. The Bible says that your debt is, has been paid, so we ought to be marked with thankfulness. He paid our debt for sin that we may live. And at times we find it hard to be thankful. It can be easy to get to a state where we grumble, complain, and it can be hard to be grateful. Yes, everything, you may not, everything may not be working in your life right now as you wish, but when you look at your life critically, is there something that you can be grateful to God about? Yes, your financial situation may not be what you want it to be, but look at 2022, or look at where the years began to where it is now. Have you gone to hospitals? Do you know how many people we've buried? But you are here, and that is something that you can be grateful to God about. And you may be at that place right now, and you are thinking, God, how can I be grateful? When I've gone to university, I've graduated, this is the third year I'm tamaking, nothing seems to come up. When I've tried to start my own business, in a end, in a, in a shuka. When no one in my family seems to break through. Everyone is looking to you to your, at, in your family, but no breakthrough. When you are there, you are educating your siblings, and all of a sudden your job just comes to an end. How can you be grateful? But the Bible says that regardless of each of the trials, the answer is in verse 1. For though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you may comfort me. And when you just think that God's anger has been turned away from us, then we should be grateful. Because nothing else can scare you. Ata we landol da kikuja. I mean, what's the worst that they can do? Sini ya kufunge nyumba. Ama kufukuze inje. And actually I saw an auction juicy. This guy alifungua nyumba. And the only thing, angeuza, ilikuwa tutu vest, nini? Do you mean, hizo azinge lipa yo rent? Because utenda jikununua vest ya kwanza ya muafrika. Wacha mtumba ya tui kutoka kikomba. They could not even have paid the rent for that person. But when you think that God's anger has been turned away, so the biggest problem facing every sinner on earth is the wrath of God right now. Not Satan, not the world, not the trials of life, but the wrath of God towards sinners. And I'll show you 336. John 336. He who believes, he who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God Hides on him. So today, when you think that God's wrath has been taken away from you because of what Christ did on the cross because of us, then we have a reason to be joyful. And in Romans 5 9, it says, We have now been justified by his blood. Much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. In Hebrews 10 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of of the living God. The greatest danger facing every sinner is God himself. Think about that for a moment. That indeed, God himself, yes, he has offered salvation freely. Yes, he has turned his anger away from us. But are we living according to what the Bible tells us or instructs us to live? Are we living a life that is pleasing to God? 
If you ever struggle with thankfulness, always remember that God has saved you from that fiery furnace. Then thankfulness will well up in your heart again. And you know the wrath of God is that endless punishment. The fierce anger of and wrath of God towards you has been turned away, not because of anything you've done, but because of His grace to save me. So this morning we can be grateful that God has loved you with an everlasting love. That God does not, is not against you. God does not condemn you, but he has turned his wrath and anger. But it is for you and me that we accept salvation. You know, when you think about that, you can just take a minute and say, thank you God for your grace. When you think of that reality, how can you not be thankful? If you are not thankful, ask yourself if you are first saved or whether you understand the gospel. This is why it is important to draw from the wells of salvation and preach to ourselves daily and remind us that we, what God has saved us and he has done to purchase that salvation. He took our sins on the cross. He took the wrath of our sins upon himself at the cross, turning the wrath of God away from us. Actually, the Bible says his face was so mad. You know, alikuwa mearibiwa uso until ata unge muangalia. Watch out what we see on film. And according to verse 1, he's, re he's replaced his wrath with comfort. How can we not be thankful? Imagine if someone, you remember those days when you were young and mamako uliko na jua leo ni leo. And then all of a sudden unaingia, mgenia naingia, wanacheka. And then somehow, you are, the wrath of your mother is turned away from you. Weren't you grateful? Ata saizo ndo unedo na jilalisha mapema. I remember a day ni liitua, mulwa. Ilikuwa ni kama continue. But ni kajifanya ni meni, and I'm telling God, aki tu, please, asini, asinifikie. And akasema, ah, kama melala wachana na and that was over. Also, a reminder of how deeply and personal salvation is. Jesus is our personal savior. You will say, you know the Bible says you will say in that day. So with your mouth you shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Until the wrath of God is turned away from you, there will be no salvation. And we thank God that the wrath of God has been turned away from us. Personally, have you had the wrath of God turned away from you? Have you received Jesus as Lord and Savior? In your life. Have you had his anger. For your sin turned away from you. Do you want relief. Do you want comfort. From the guilt of your sin. Therefore turn from sin. And put your faith in Jesus. Number two we look at fearless, fearless trust. In verse two the Bible says. Behold God is my salvation. I will trust. And not be afraid. That is in verse two. God is my salvation, I will trust and not be afraid. The angry God in verse 1 has become a gracious savior in verse 2. God is our salvation. It flows out of his character. It's his state of being that God himself is salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The antidote to fear is a greater trust in the Lord. And you see, the Bible says that whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are praiseworthy, think of those things. Why? Because as you think of the goodness of God, as you think of the might of God, then any other thing in our life, it diminishes. Fear diminishes. You know, when you come to a point where you don't know about your tomorrow, it diminishes because already you've exalted what is greater in your life. If you have perfect trust in the Lord, there is no reason to fear because you trust, him. you trust him in any and every situation. And at times I'm taken back to this song when we sing, I surrender. Do we really mean it from our hearts? You know, have you surrendered, let's say, your finances? If God told you today, give me that car or give me, will you obey? If God, uh, have you given your wife, have you given your children to God? And I remember on two occasions, as they were opening school, the, the situation was not so good. 
So I went and I told God, that day I was, uh, as I was praying, I told God, you know what, God, I will not fear. Because you cannot show children fear. Let me tell you, because you'll be parents one day. Those of you who are not parents now. Simsema, amen. You'll be parents. So you cannot show your children fear. Uwanzangi kulia, alafu mama anashanga, wewe, ukwani unalia. Yeah? So I told them, ingia kwa gari. And you know, by the way, let me tell you, me I do car business. And it's one of the businesses, njiu uko na gari kubwa, lakini you have nothing at that time in your pocket. Baka yo gari, eh? Baka yo gari yende. So you tell them, ingie ni kwa gari, tunenda shule. And the wife is looking at you and akuliza, ulipata? Unawambia, God will provide. Tuende. And two occasions, just before I reached school, unakuta message, mpesa imengia. And you are like, God, thank you, Jesus. And I remember even another one I went and I, and I was trying to tell the teacher, sasa mwalimu, nitakuja. We unanijua? Don't worry. And as I walked out of that office, a message came. And I went back in and I told her, my God has come. Later your account, nitalipa. So, we need to walk in fearless trust. At times, situations in life, they may make us to fear. You know, you are there, you don't know how your tomorrow is going to be. You don't know uh, how the situation is going to be. But you know what? Have that fearless trust that God, he said it, he will do it. And therefore, there is nothing difficult before God. And I want to tell you, where you are right now, it does not determine where you are going. So, walk with God. Keep on drawing from the wells of salvation. Keep on reading God's word. And you will see God come through for you. How do we better activate this fearless trust? By living out verse 3. By drawing water regularly from the wells of salvation. And I told you, outside God, never overestimate yourself. Outside God, me and anyone outside there who does not know God. If a financial crisis comes, see what to panic the same. But if I have God, I will walk tall. I will say, Ningapi, na seyo niko na masidi, sata maybe inonesha fuel uh, red. But niko hapo adam confident. Na angalia plot na namuambia ni sawa. Wacha nikeke mezabi yangu vizuri. But you know, in your bank account, ni zero. But because you know God, unajua kuna kitungumu. When you are fearful, look to God. Micah 7.7 7 says, as for me, I look up to Yahweh. I look up to Yahweh. So when situations come and they are tough, who do you look up to? Where do you look up to? Look up to God, the source of your salvation. And remember what he has done for you. He is the same God. He is the same God I've prayed with people in church and I've seen uh, it was a bad medical report and that week it was turned around. That is the same God who is able to work. If God has saved you from the greatest threat, namely his wrath, why should you fear a much lesser threat? A season that will pass away. And you know life is full of seasons. I think we, this is something that everyone would say because it has been talked over and over and over. And you know the Bible says what faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So even in that situation we've been given scriptures that we can hold on to even when the season looks like it will swallow us. If God delivered you from the greatest threat he will definitely deliver you from the lesser threat. It will not conquer you. We are more than conquerors. As the Bible says in the book of Romans 8. The third one we look at divine strength. It marks the personal worship of the individual as he continues to draw from the wells of salvation. In verse 2, the Bible says that for the Lord, God is my strength. And it says in that translation, Yah. The name for the Lord God there is Yah. And this first was seen in Exodus 15, verse 2a. That God's strength was put on display and saved them from the Egyptians. And in what English Bible it says that Yah is my strength and song. And let me tell you, at times when that strength seems 
to fade off. Always remember that God is your strength. Remember that yeah, if he could deliver the children of Israel, there is nothing he cannot deliver you. If he has delivered you from the wrath of God, which is what we could fear most, there is nothing that God cannot deliver you from. So even right now, you may be there, your strength may be weak, but I want to tell you that as you look up to God, God is able to turn your situation around. As you sing that song, that God, is there anything that is too difficult from you, for you? God is able to turn that situation around. We are to look back at our great delivery from sin. Look at what God did for you and for me on the cross. We cannot deliver ourselves, but as we look back, we are reminded of all the power of all powerful God who is able to deliver to the uttermost and do what we cannot do. So God is able to deliver us even from the greatest pits. And I tell you this because I'm a living testimony of what God can do. Yes, sometimes I've got it wrong, sometimes I've got it right. And especially in my work with God, when I feared, everything crumbled. But when I stood on to the word of God and held on to the word of God, I saw God's deliverance. When we draw from the wells of salvation, we are reminded that we are weak, but he is strong. We are reminded that of our, of our own, we are inadequate. But we can only depend on God's superior strength. So this morning, what are you depending on? Are you depending on your bank account because it looks fat? Are you depending on your parents because maybe they are loaded? Let me tell you, situations can change, but God never changes. So learn to put your trust in God. The more we remind ourselves, the least likely we depend on our strength. And let me tell you, today, if even God blessed you, desire that even if God blessed you so much, you will still come uh, to this service early in the morning. I a road trip every weekend because money is there. You can fly to Mombasa any time. But you will desire to be a blessing to God's people. That when God puts something in your pocket, Aitakuwa sasa ndio unapigia mam, mam, eh, leo, nilikuwa na kaflight, na unajua singe cancel all of a sudden, but you will desire to come and be a blessing to the people of God. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 10, that be strong in the Lord. Don't be strong in yourself, be strong in the Lord. Okay? Drink from the wells of salvation to be reminded daily. And lastly, we look at joyful praise. Verse 6 says, shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion. Saved people sing with joy and for joy. And let me tell you, even the Bible says that we've been endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Because our joy is not determined by what we are going through. Our joy is not determined by the situation that uh, surrounds us. So we need to be on fire for God. And I remember I gave an example as I was in Zuri some few weeks ago. A young man, Alkwana Dreddy Kama Stephen, and he went and talked to the conductor, Kamwambia, you know what? Give me some time. And this boy preached powerful. He preached in that matatu. And I looked at him as he was preaching. And I was excited at this young man that he can commandeer a whole matatu just to preach the word of God. Brethren, zilietu mefika hapo for God. And I remember I said, yes, maybe it's just mama, but I will sow into his life. And as he sat down, I told him, uh, young man, put your number there. And I sowed to him a good seed as he was preaching in that matter. And yes, we should be on fire for God. Let me tell you, every opportunity that comes, desire to tell someone about Jesus. And today we have a good opportunity to do that at 1.30. At 1.30. Come back. Let us go and preach to the people around Zimmerman. It is our response to the works of the Lord. The more you draw from the wells of salvation, the more you want to sing about it. Having been saved from the wrath and anger, how can we afford not to sing? How can we not be joyful people? Your life may feel difficult at the moment. 
But the Bible says that our light affliction, in the book of 2 uh, Corinthians 4.17, that our light affliction is for a moment. If God could only show you the glory that is to come, I tell you, you will rejoice because of what God has in store for you. So beyond the sorrow, beyond the disappointments, there is a joy that transcends the circumstances of our lives because it is not rooted in our circumstances, but in eternity. It is rooted in Jesus, that God is able to deliver me. Let me tell you, you might be in a pit today, and I know what being in a pit is. Let me be very honest with you. And especially with three children and a wife who looks at you. I know what it means to be in a pit. But I know what it means for God to deliver you. I know it firsthand. Not from anyone else. I know what it means for God to deliver you. So, you know what? Walk with your head high. And trust God. That God is willing to come to your situation. He is willing to go beyond your situation and beyond your circumstances. Because Jesus is our salvation forever and forevermore. So even as I call the praise and worship team just to come briefly, maybe you are here and you feel, I was walking, I was walking this journey of salvation, but maybe something along the way came and I don't know what has been happening. Maybe it's your prayer life. You started off fiery. But something along the way happened and you find that you are not praying anymore like you used to pray. You are not excited anymore like you used to be excited. And remember the four characteristics of personal worship of the individual. Thankless, uh, thankfulness, fearless trust, divine strength, joyful praise. And you are here and you are saying, God, I want you to touch me once more. I want you to Restore that joy of salvation. Lord, I used to wake up at night to pray, to read your word, but it has become a struggle in my life. And God, I want you to touch me once more, that I shall keep on redigging the wells of salvation. That indeed, regardless of what has tried, has tried to bring me down, I will not give up. But God, I will keep on redigging. And even as I stay in that... Uh, you remember when I talk of the, uh, being in a desert uh, in those wells? Keep on there at that well. Keep on redigging. Keep on trusting God. Keep on tarrying in the presence of God because your breakthrough is closer than you can imagine. But it will not come if you give up. And the Bible says that if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So don't allow your strength to be small this day. Rise up on your feet. And come and connect to the ministers that uh, will be here. If you want prayer, if you want God to touch you once more, if you want God to restore your strength, if you want God to renew you, come and believe with someone, come and pray with someone. The ministry team can stand at the front. Ninaomba uniguze tena niguze tena come, come for prayer we don't have a lot of time you want to trust you want to walk with someone you want to believe with someone that God is able to transform your life come
Maybe you're also there and you've never given your life to the Lord. You are there, you used to be zealous for God and somehow things happened and you went back. This is a good opportunity for you 
If you are there and you want to give your life or you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, you can raise up your hand. The ushers will support you and we will be able to pray with you. You are there, you are not sure whether the wrath of God and the anger it has been turned away from you but you've not accepted Christ as Lord in your heart. This is the day, this is the right time that you can give your life to the Lord. That you can say, you know what God? Yes, now I learn to surrender. That God help me to stay at the wells of salvation. That I may keep on redigging. You are there, you are not born again. Come to the front. Let someone pray with you. Let someone pray with you. Don't be afraid. Remember we've talked of fearless trust. Don't look at what will, what will people say. No, come to the front and let someone believe with you. And just in case any leader at the front, they can pray with you even after this service. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to bless your name. We return all the glory and all the honor to you. Thank you for speaking to us this morning, O oh God. And Father, our desire is that we may you may teach us, you may give us the grace to tarry in your presence. Grace, O oh God, to tarry in prayer, to tarry in reading your word and to believe until we see you've come through for us. Therefore, Lord, this morning we end our service with thankfulness. We thank you for what you've done in the life of each and every person in this place. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for turning your anger away from us. Thank you for turning your wrath away from us. Thank you for dying on the cross because of my sin, because of our sin, O oh God. And Father, I pray that even in our walk of salvation, we shall walk in fearless trust, that knowing that you began a good work in us is faithful to complete it. And Father, when our joy, when our strength decreases, remind us that you are the source of our strength. And Father, even, even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. And therefore, Lord, again, you remind us, O oh God, that we always give that sacrifice of praise, that joyful praise, when it does not feel like, when we don't feel like praising you, but we'll still wake up in the middle of the night and praise you. In the midst of that hard situation, Lord, we shall remember to praise you because you are a loving God. Therefore, Lord, I thank you for the life of each and every person in this place and their families. Lord, may there be change that is evident in their lives. Lord, whatever they are trusting you for, come through for them in the name of Jesus. If it's a job, Lord, provide. If it's finances, Lord, provide in the name of Jesus because you are able to do exceedingly abundantly according to the power that is at work within us. Therefore, Lord, we stand upon this altar that you are not a man that you should lie. And we believe that indeed you are our salvation and you are coming through for us in a powerful way in the name of Jesus. Therefore, receive all the praise and receive all the glory. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray.